Welcome to the, the Filter Podcast. I'm Matt Steen. Uh, I'm Todd Rhodes. Yeah. And this is our weekly attempt to bring the church world up to speed on whatever we find to be shiny and important. So this week I was thinking we could start with um, with, with Todd's stupid idea of the week. What do you oh, got? What do you, you, got? You, you sure you want to start there, huh? <laughs> Well, of course, we want we want people to know how incredibly wise we are. Yeah, well, this this will uh, this will tell them right up front. Uh, I actually posted a blog post on that on this this week. You know, I forget which night it was. Uh, a few nights ago, I was watching uh, this show on Fox called Hotel Hell. I don't know if anybody's seen it, but uh, I've never been a huge Gordon Ramsay fan or even a slight Gordon Ramsay fan uh, from all of his uh, restaurant work. But essentially, what he does is he goes in and he. Uh, goes into these restaurants and now he's going into these hotels and uh, kind of as an outside eyes and ears and uh, tells them exactly uh, what they're doing wrong and pretty much belittles them and swears at them and uh, gets in their face and all in an effort to make them better. Okay, so my here's my stupid idea. I think the church needs some kind of a Gordon Ramsay figure. Maybe not as extreme, okay, but uh, and I. I, I, I Put my hand up and said, "I could do that." You know, um, I'm thinking there's about 300,000 churches in the country. Uh, about uh, I'm not going to put a percentage on, but so many of them are dysfunctional. So many of them are dead and not growing, uh, and so many of them are just entrenched in internal just turmoil uh, that they need some outside ears and eyes to come in and just say, "Stop it!" You're <laughs> really goofing this thing up. Uh, you know, there's a lot of pastors that need to uh, have a finger just kind of pointed at them and say, you're the problem here, knock it off. And there's board members and elder members that need the same thing. Um, but I, I could do that, you know. I'm, I'm rude enough <laughs> and cantankerous enough that uh, I think I could do that. But one, one person uh, blog, uh, gave a comment on the blog and said, you know, there's already Gordon Ramsay's in every church. They're just a part of the problem. They're a part of the board. And I, I think that's absolutely right. There's a lot of cantankerous people that are pastors and church elders and, and just attending that complain all the time. But a fresh set of eyes, I think, would really... Uh, do us some good. There's some people that are out there that are doing it that are going in and just trying to be nice, but I think sometimes you just got to be brutally honest. I don't see anybody out there doing it. So, so, that's so, a idea. What do you think? So, so tell me, what do you think about the financial model for that? Do you think you can get rich on that one? No, I don't think anybody in the world would ever pay for it. Matter of fact, I'll, I will make an offer on our very first podcast. Anybody that wants to do that, Matt, you can come along with me. We'll charge half of what Gordon Ramsay would charge to come to your. Uh, Place of business for please. Standing. Uh, you in with me on this? Uh, I'm there. Okay. I'm there. All right, uh, but I, you know, I don't think any pastors and churches will. Here's my thing. I think pastors and churches will pay thousands of dollars to consultants to come in and tell them what they want to hear, or come in and tell them what they necessarily don't want to hear in really nice flowery terms. Uh, but I don't think anybody would pay a dollar for somebody to come in and say, "This is what you need to change." Knock it off. <laughs> do, you, do you think anybody would pay for that? I I would. Would you? you know, I, honest, honestly, honestly, well, I'm, I'm available <laughs> next weekend. <laughs> I, I um yeah, I'll get right on. I'll, I'll talk to my billing department or see how much yeah, we have in the bank. Yeah. Now, I, honestly, I I have made a habit of surrounding myself with people that that tell me I'm stupid on a regular basis because I I need that. Yeah, but it's also you know it's not popular, and I don't I don't think you're going to get rich. I hate to break that one to you. Yeah, that's that's why I, I categorized it as a stupid idea. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, well that's my what's yours? I mean, you, you I, you're bringing a stupid idea to the table, right? <sighs> oh, I've got plenty. Um, where sh where should I start? This 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 week, and I, you're you're going to like this one. Okay. This week I was I was talking to one of my clients about um doing. Uh, testimonies in church on Sunday morning, mm -hmm. and we we got to talking about how different churches do it, and, and discussing um, how you know so so many churches are using video testimonies during services mm -hmm. instead of doing live testimonies anymore, and you know 
whether whether we think that's a good idea or not. And and basically, what the conversation got to is, you know, they they do that as a as a kind of a way to control the control the message because you know sometimes you have you never know. Yeah, exactly. Some sometimes that becomes the venue for somebody to get up there and tell you, you know, what the problems of the church are, and other times you have grandpa, you know, going on for forty minutes about you know, how things used to be or somebody's, you know, bad experience with Egg Fu Young, you know, and, and it just it's sure. Yeah, so so what we decided was, you know, there's there's a definite value to having live testimony as long as you can keep it from being, you know, Live. Well, yeah. <laughs> Is that what you're exactly. Saying? Yeah, just without the without the extra the extra added value, we'll say. And so, what well, we decided, and we're going to try this at his church, so that my name's nowhere near this. Um, <laughs> yeah. Is is to go with the with 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 live testimonies, gong show style. And so what okay. we'll do, what we'll do is we'll have somebody, you know, they'll just go, and once they start getting off track, or once you know people in the third row's eyes start to glaze over, something like that, you know, hit the gong and you're done. So you, you please tell me you have a gong show sound. No, you sound. know what? I I used to a little secret about me that I've never shared publicly. When when I was in high school, I used to come home from school every day, and the <laughs> gong show was on. Did you ever watch the gong show with Chuck Barris? <laughs> Never. Really? N never. Really? I would never Dancing watch something like machine? that. You don't remember <laughs> Dancing Machine? Oh, I do. Unknown <laughs> comic, and, and well, you can call me Ray, and you can call me Jay, but she doesn't have to call me Johnson. Oh, my. They were not kind of great. I'm sorry. Um, but, so you're, you're thinking an actual gong? I'm, I'm thinking an actual gong. And the pastor would be the... I don't. I don't know if it's the pastor. I, I'm thinking maybe like the chairman of the trustees or, or you know, lead <laughs> yeah. elder or somebody like that. You know, you know who's, who's related to half the church. My, that could lead into my horrible idea that I had shared because they're going to need my service after they get gone with their testimony. Absolutely, man. I no, I think I, that could be a winner. <laughs> um, we did this. Let me tell you, we did that. We didn't have the gong, but we did this back in the '80s in my church. Every Sunday, we would. Do it. And I've not shared this with you, so this is <laughs> this is all fresh. Um, two stories that I got to share really quickly. The first one that we used to do this every week. It was called prayer and praise time. Okay, anybody could get up. I, I think a lot of churches used to do. Mm -hmm. The first one that was just absolutely thinking hilarious was a guy got up and he said, him and his wife were sitting there, and he said, uh, man, it has just been a rough week. I'd really like to ask you prayers. Uh, I can't tell you what's been going on in my household, but all I can say is that my wife is having like the worst period she's ever experienced. <laughs> she's sitting right next to him. Oh, my goodness. If looks could kill... It's like what well, that guy had absolutely no common sense at all. You ever hear of Louis Grizzard? No. Uh, he, he had this bit where he'd talk about that kind of stuff. He said, Man, brother, don't believe I would have shared that. Yeah. <laughs> well so that's one thing that should not have been and that would definitely have gotten it gone. The other thing that I hope I can nobody's watching this, right? Not right so, now. Okay, good. Well, uh, <laughs> we we had this gal, sweet gal, but um she was a little, um, a little slow, I guess. I don't know. She's a nice gal, but every every week before the pastors, uh, before we'd start the service, the pastors would walk right up down the middle of the aisle. The pastors would sit on the stage. This is again back in the day. And right as the pastor was walking out, he pulled the pastor aside. She said, "Pastor, could you pray for me? I'm having some big problems with my Virginia." <laughs> Okay, so, and of course she said, <laughs> of course she said it loud enough for, for the whole back part of the church to hear, but imagine you're the pastor and you're getting ready to walk up on stage, you're halfway up the aisle, and you get this little bit of information, and you have to go into prayer time. <laughs> Anyway, I think it's a great idea. Uh, all that to say, uh, man, I think it's just a great idea. I think we can market that one. How do you how do you preach after that? I, how do you pray? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. 
I, I mean, wow. <laughs> How do you continue a podcast after that? Um, <laughs> We're here all week, people. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, try the meatloaf. Um <laughs> Any okay, so so maybe we should get a little serious if 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 we, if we can. Uh, all right, I'll try. So can can you can you pull that off? So one of the things um one of the things that we wanted to try to do is kind of run through some of the things that caught our eye on the internet and the interwebs throughout the course of the week. And Todd, you do the ministry briefing um, um, each month that kind of filters out what's what's noise on the internet and what's actually valuable information. So maybe we could run through some of the things that we've, that we've been looking at um, sure. on there. One of the things that, that we, we hadn't even really talked about this much leading into this, but with um, today being, being Friday the 24th and the whole Lance Armstrong fiasco that just kind of blew up last night, you know, yeah. Todd, what, what do you think about that? You know, I, I'm I'm not a huge Lance Armstrong fan. I mean, I just I haven't followed him other than the headlines. But you know, right. my first my first thought, as it usually is with things like this, is I try to put myself in their situation. I have no clue because I've never been there. But right. my first thought is why why wouldn't you want to clear yourself? You know, why why are there's something there that is making him willing to give up these? Titles. And what he's saying is that. Look, the organization is taking the titles from me. Doesn't have the power to take the titles from me. Um, but uh, the other report I read this morning was that if if he would have continued on, that there would have been a lot of depositions and uh, at least ten of his uh, teammates and biker or, uh, bikers. I don't call them bikers, do they? Oh, we'll call them bikers. Yeah. Yeah. Would have come forward with with uh, testimony that they had actually eyewitnessed him doing this. So. Um, but my first thought is, man, if you didn't do it, fight it. But I've never been in a situation. But what do you think? Well, I, I get, I get the fact. I part of what he is saying makes sense to me. You know, he's been fighting this since what ninety nine. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure it's old. And I get, I get the exhaustion piece of it. I mean, we've we've all been through those those long and arduous church business meetings. I mean, struggles in our lives that that are just kind of, it, it just just kind of wear you down. Um, so part of me gets that, but but I also, man, I tell you, I I'm also skeptical enough to know that where there's smoke, you know, a lot of times that there's 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 fire going on. And, yeah. So I my my concern and just kind of thinking thinking about what this looks like going forward is you know what does this do to his his foundation what does this do to that whole live strong thing you know and mm -hmm. I've never bought a bracelet um, but um, you know I don't know that I will now but um, I saw somewhere on Twitter yesterday that the makers of the WWJD bracelets are pretty much are pretty excited about this because it means that they're going to have more sales than the Livestrong guys now. But there you go. Is that is that thing still going? The WWJD thing? It's the first time I've heard about it in about ten years. Yeah, it was huge for a while, but oh well. Yeah. So I, I don't know. What do you, what do you? I mean, we we see this in the church world all the time. I mean, how do you how do you prepare for that, or can you prepare for something like that, foundation wise, or you know, I, I don't know. I've got a lot of thoughts on this subject, and um, the one part of it is, and I know we're, we're kind of brief on time, but uh, w along with what you said, uh, anybody can make any kind of accusation mm -hmm. just like that anymore. used to be if somebody was upset with you as a pastor or church leader at your church, they either had to use a telephone, or if they were really nasty, they'd write up a letter and send it out to people in your church. Now they can start a blog, they can put it on Facebook and Twitter, they can. And none of it has to be true. Um, they can just, uh, and you really have no defense. So, so I, I, I kind of with Lance a little bit on that because I, you know, I'm five seconds away from somebody posting something that's totally erroneous about me, and how would I react to that? I, yeah, you know, it's totally erroneous. I don't know. But like you yeah. said, on the internet, a lot of times things like that, there's where there's smoke, there's some fire too. So. It's just everybody has a platform. Everybody has a voice, and it didn't used to be like that. And you've got a lot of irresponsible people out there that will take advantage of that against uh, leaders, and the church is not exempt from that, unfortunately. Yeah, and unfortunately, we've seen a lot of that here lately, too, just just guys with pretty significant platforms that are 
for one reason or another blowing up. I, 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 I don't know, you know, not, not being in that situation. I, I can only imagine the wrestling that he went through just thinking about this on a foundational level and all the, some of the, you know, the, he's, he's done good work, mm-hmm. you know, and how this, you know, how this potentially kind of blows that up. But I, I don't, I don't know. I'm interested to see what happens and, and hear a little bit more of the story about what's about to come out. Cause you know, something else is out there. Yeah, well, that's the thing is you don't know what all is out there. Plus you have to remember Matt that this guy's got attorneys and public relations and marketing people behind him and everybody's telling him, different things so this is it's not just like you and me answering something this is there's a whole there's a business behind this how much of this do you think is all those attorneys and PR people and all that kind of stuff saying pay me uh, I think there's a big part of that you know I have this that can't be cheap you know <laughs> no, it can't be. So. not at all Ugh. so I am um, I, f- I feel for the dude. You you had mentioned something about you know everything blowing up on Twitter and and how how everybody has a Twitter account and um and 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 can make an accusation all that kind of stuff. But I, I saw something this week on um about Twitter. Michael uh, Lukaszewski posted something on his blog about no longer pff, tweeting in church. I saw that. I saw that. Because you know he he finds it hard to really kind of connect, and the phone's a distraction, all that kind of stuff. Do you, Todd? You know, we uh, well, we have one viewer. I don't know who it is right this very second, but um, tell me, do you uh, do you tweet in church? Do I? You know, every <laughs> once in a while I do. Um, and and this kind of goes along with some of the technology things or a couple of things we we're going to talk about with the tweeting and then there's a, another piece we we're going to talk about with the digital Bible about how uh, so much of the Bible is going from the printed page to the to the electronic form. The thing that I find, I don't so much use Twitter that much, but I do use my Bible at church. And I've noticed that a lot of, as I look down, I've got a, a, a 14, 16, and 18, and a 20-year-old. And as I look down, <laughs> Miles in my row, but everybody has their phone out looking at it. Um, and I don't know whether my kids are on all on Twitter. I don't know that they tweet during church, but I get what Michael's saying. Um, he, he says his phone is distracting, and he feels like if he's if he's rushing to to tweet one of the points from the message, that he's more interested in uh, telling other people about it than internalizing that truth for himself. I I. I I get that, um, and, but I, I don't know. What do you think? I mean, I think it's kind of a personal choice. It, does it is it a distraction for some people? I think it probably really is. For me, I don't know. I just I kind of, I'm not that huge of a tweeter, so I, I don't tweet very church normally. Yeah, I, I can't. I, I get I get so <clears throat> it's so easy to distract me that yeah. the, the last thing I need to do is be fiddling with my phone in the middle of church service. Um, Cause I, I get what he says. I, I find it hard to, en- I, I find it hard enough to engage anyhow in services typically because, because the way my mind works, that the last thing that I need is to have that stupid phone, you know, kind of ruling, <clears throat> ruling what I do. But what, what I found, what I found to be interesting over the last, um, well, since Christmas, is I, I got a Kindle over at Christmas, and I've started to make the transition to be you know strictly digital um, when it comes to Bibles and all that kind of stuff. And and I have I've had to turn off the Wi-Fi on my Kindle so that I won't get won't have that distraction. Yeah, and, and yeah, that to, is true. Yeah, so I mean that's that's been that's been a huge kind of help me kind of focus in some ways on that, but at the same time I I've come to the realization you know you you shared an article and we'll we'll share it in show notes, but um, about how people are are using Kindles and just readers and that kind of stuff in church and um, while I, I did find the eighty something year old woman's you know line about what happens if it runs out of you know battery power to be kind of interesting um, I don't I don't know about you but I, I don't think I could ever preach or do a upfront presentation based on on a Kindle um, really now my pastor uses an iPad does um, he? I know a lot that do and it's um, he loves it but yeah. 
But, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I mean, I use, I, I'm kind of with you, I use, I very seldom, mostly because of my eyes anymore. I'm, today's my birthday, I'm 48, and my eyes are horrible. <laughs> Um, so, so I, I have the uh, the iPad with the uh, U version and the and the extra large text turned on. So <laughs> that works well for me, but I I have to shut off the notifications too, or else. Uh, yeah. But I will tell you this: uh, something that distracts me more than me using my phone during church is other people using their phones during church, and I don't have an answer for that one. <laughs> it's like the recovering alcoholic or the recovering smoker. You know. yeah, well, it's like I'm wondering what you know. What are you doing on your phone? You, know, you on Facebook? You got an email? You got something more important here? And then I'll find myself looking at my phone. So yeah, yeah. My my problem is if 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 you get a good look at these here, I've got some pretty chunky fingers, and they're not well designed to you know kind of navigate. And so I end up hitting. And you know, if you look at my digital Bible or something like that, I'll I'll end up going to the to the to the notes by mistake. And mm -hmm. I can just I can just see myself up front in front of a crowd of people, you know, reading about Nehemiah, and then end up, you know, having some sort of historical stuff in front of me, and just kind of losing it. So, yeah, yeah. that'd be a bad day for everybody. So, <laughs> so anyhow, so what else? What else you got over there? Uh, let's see here. You know, one of the things I thought was interesting. It's kind of the technology thing, maybe a little bit. But uh, Tom Rainer had a post this past week about what pastors read. Mm. And he talked about you know the, the business whether they read business books and all that and it, you know most most pastors do read some type of non theology type book. But what I thought was interesting, particularly for you and me because we're bloggers, is that uh, they asked. And this is a live way thing. Uh, and a typical week, how many different bloggers do you read? How many? How many do you think they actually? The average path. How many? How many pastors from the people that they surveyed uh, read? Absolutely no blogs whatsoever. What do you think? Oh, man. See, I read this last night. <laughs> oh, well. well I, I, I've never seen it before. I would say maybe, I don't, I don't know, 48%. Very good. <laughs> wow, that's excellent, man. Yeah. <laughs> they said 48% 40, of pastors do not read any blogs whatsoever. Um there's a one percent that read more than fifteen blogs, but uh, about a third of pastors overall read between one and three blogs, mm -hmm. which is um, interesting to me as a blogger. That because I write to pastors, mm -hmm. is that you know, seventy percent of people, um, uh, well over half never read a blog, so they're not reading anything that I write, which is which is fine, probably wise on their part, but, uh, but uh, you know they're just. Uh, what I would be interested in seeing is what this number would look like three or four years ago when blogs were, I think, much bigger than they yeah. are now. But um, and the other question it, it is for me is okay, so where are these? How are these pastors connecting online to the greater pastoral church community? If they're not doing it through blogs, are they doing it through social media? Or are they just totally checked out? Right. Um, I don't know. Tom doesn't answer that question. No. Tom, post on that, please. <laughs> yeah, that's that's our one viewer right now. What I, when I read that, what I found to be incredibly cool um, was was the idea of the size of churches and mm -hmm. uh, you know of those that were engaging in blogs. Do you do you have that information in front of you? Uh, yeah, I'm, I don't want to read it here, but uh, my remembrance from reading it was that the smaller the church, the less likely the pastor was to read a blog. So there you have. Yeah. Lifeway says if you read our blogs, your church is going to grow astronomically. It's guaranteed. It's Lifeway, you know? That's it's so that, sensor, right? That sounds like another person's uh, we won't go there, but that's not what it said. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard claims like that from other people through yeah. emails and things, but <laughs> we won't go there. Moving on to Boca. We'll save, um, that, for, yes. we'll, we'll save that for uh, for another day. <laughs> Tell me, um, you 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 sent something my way about the multi-site stuff. Um, your your buddy Warren Bird was was quoted about you know there being five thousand multi-site churches and yes, there are. Um, that's really the big story. There's not a whole lot you can and we'll we'll provide some show notes for anybody that does want to watch this later, but. Uh, 
Um, yeah, just a new survey came out that said that the, the number of multi-site churches in the U.S. and Canada is, is for the first time gone over 5,000, which is um, just tremendously awesome. Obviously, in full disclosure, I work with Leadership Network, and we've worked a lot, um, uh, most of 90% of it behind the scenes. Um, in the early days of uh, the multi-site movement mm -hmm. uh, to gather people together and kind of give it some steam. So really proud uh, for uh, Warren, for uh, my colleague Greg Ligon and the others at Leadership Network that have played a, a small role in this. But um, just think about the impact that 5,000 uh, churches multiplying out is having uh, and where that's going to go. And, and we still... Um, are seeing a lot of steam in this multi-site movement. It's not waning at all yet. How have how have you seen it change over over the last what ten years? Yeah, well, um, and I'm I'm by far not the person to ask as far as being a real expert on it. But I think um, churches have grown and tried to do a lot of different things. Um, you know, and, and there's still. It's an interesting movement. There's not one way of doing things. You know, you still have churches that are doing video venues that are doing full video. There's some that do video worship and some that do live worship. There's some that are multi-site that don't do video at all, that have uh, a pastor that will speak early one place and then travel to another. There's churches that have uh, uh, that, are, that are multi-site but have different teaching pastors. So uh, um, there's multi-sites with different names. Uh, uh, there's multi-sites that are around one personality, very you know personality focused. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, there's just all different kinds of things. Now internally, I think there's been a lot, not only in the format, but uh, a lot of these multi-sites, uh, even through our leadership communities at Leadership Network, have gotten together to try and figure out, okay, what does it mean uh, internally? Do we share all of that uh, administrative type thing? Do we uh, separate it? Uh, what does the the polity and the administration look like? And there's still a lot of different ways to do it. There's not one way to do it, but um, people are figuring out what works and what doesn't work. And so it's it's still I still think it's a young movement got a lot of strength. And uh, used to uh, the other thing I think is when it originally started it was huge churches that did it. Now it's smaller churches, uh, small towns that are saying, well, you know, we've got a hundred people here, but 15 minutes away there's another town that is unchurched or, or needs a, a good Bible believing church and they're they're doing that and it's working. So it's it's really kind of trickled down, which is great. That's that's wild. And that's I, you know, we I go to a church that's doing the multi site thing now and there's a handful of other churches that I'm kind of walking through the multi site thing with and it's just it's it's phenomenal how I, I'm 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 a fan of the movement. I'm a fan, you know, I'm a, I'm a fan of church planning as well. But I think it's I, I, as I look to the to the excitement being generated about church planning and the excitement that's being ger generated about the multi site. Man, I'm looking forward to seeing what what the next ten, fifteen, twenty years, you know, looks like as we continue to do this innovation, you know, in, in yeah, how we deliver and, uh, this. There are a lot of churches too. I think early on there was a a great. Um, kind of uh, strain between church planting versus multi-site. And I think right now um, there's not that strain anymore because so many churches are doing both. You know, they're doing multi-sites and they're planting. Yeah. Um, so and Mark Driscoll's a good example. Mars Hill both plants tons of churches, but they're also a multi-site church. And there's, there's a lot of churches that are taking on kind of that hybrid model that have kind of breached that divide that was there initially. Yeah. Yeah, and that's 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 cool to see. It's always fun to see the church actually start to embrace one another again, right? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. We could do we could do that more for sure. So you had something though about um, uh, what was it the uh, the next generation coming up and employment? Oh, yeah, and I thought that was really interesting. Yeah, I um this this was um from blogging for jobs, which you know we'll link to in in, in show notes and stuff, but um. You know they're they're talking about how fifty six percent of Generation Y won't work for a company without social media access, and this a lot of this is based off of research that um that Cisco had done, and it's talking about how you know 
money is less important than having the ability to choose which devices they use and which, you know, being able to access social media at work, you know, whether it's for work purposes or personal purposes. It's it's kind of fascinating how incredibly, you know, prevalent social media is becoming and, you know, makes you wonder, you know, if, if this is how significant it is right now, you know what? What is what is the church world doing to kind of leverage this for, mm-hmm. you know, being able to access the next generation? So, what what did you think about that? You know, um, um, it's interesting because I think it's a double edged sword. Mm-hmm. Uh, because I think if uh, if people uh, if my son who's twenty almost twenty one enters the workforce when he gets out of college and and has access to to Facebook and Twitter and all that, I think that's fine, but you also have to look at it from the employer standpoint. They're going to be monitoring all of that stuff. Everything's time stamped, so they're, they're going to know if you're on face, Facebook for two hours a day, and that's going to get you fired, you know, quite frankly, uh, unless you have a nice, sweet union job, but uh, um, uh, yeah. uh, well, that probably wasn't very politically correct there, but anyway. Um, but I think Yeah, in the church. A union oh, job in the church. Yeah. 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 yeah well, yeah. <laughs> That's my stupid idea for next week. We need to unionize the church. Um, <laughs> uh, worship, you, worship leaders unite. Hey, man, uh, I had a youth pastor union in in North Jersey. How appropriate is that? Are you really? We'll have to talk about that sometime. That sounds interesting. But I do think that's a double-edged sword. The other thing I would share is I, went, I took our family on a cruise. Again, I've got a 14, 16, 18, 20-year-old. Uh, we took a seven-day cruise to the Caribbean. And they were all without any type of internet, any type of social media for seven days, and they were they were struggling. Yeah. Uh, Dad's the only one that had internet, and I didn't really tell them because it was like a dollar thirty-five a minute. <laughs> 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 Good scary. call. But my daughter's like, please let me check my Twitter. Like, no. Uh, so uh, yeah, it, they feel uh, they feel cut off. I mean, this was for a week, but I totally understand the, they've grown up with nothing different. This mm-hmm. is what their life is. So um, for them to, to, you know, if they're going in for a job interview and the, and the person says you cannot, you know, while you're here for eight or ten hours a day, you cannot access Facebook or Twitter or your cell phone, um, that's going to be a, a deal breaker for a lot of them. It's yeah. going to be important than the money. So yeah, that's what I think on it. Yeah, and I was um, Teresa, Teresa and I do the cruise thing every now and then too because if if we don't, we can't get dis disconnected. Yeah, you know, it is a great way to disconnect. There's there's yeah. something to be. In. This last time we went, man, I I didn't intentionally overhear, but you know, I I, I heard you know a couple of couple of teenagers that were just like, I can't mm-hmm. check Facebook. This is going to be the worst trip ever. Yep. And, all week it's like oh wow you know <laughs> i yeah I, I agree it is it's double edged sword man and i wonder how we oh lord that's my that's my way of way of yeah <laughs> yeah that's that's nice <laughs> Thank you. yeah I, I i wonder you know how how we how we leverage this how we leverage social media for the church world but also how do we how do we encourage people to disconnect Without being, you know, grandpa saying, you know, all movies are evil and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, uh, so. I'm not sure. So, well, m- moving on, we should probably get into our hit or misses since um, since we're already probably on the miss list because we're saying that social media might not be the best thing ever. Um, <laughs> so, so through the course of the week, we found. Uh, f- Five or six different things that you know going on in the in the church world, or um, <clears throat> that are either home runs or not quite. Yeah. Um, so, Todd, I, I saw you had one about Wi-Fi donkeys. Uh, yeah, there's there's um, uh, a tour company in Israel. You know, a lot of people go to Israel for biblical tours and everything. That it's a donkey tour. I don't remember exactly where they were going, but you, you ride this donkey through the biblical historical sites. Uh, but they're Wi-Fi enabled now. They have an actual Wi-Fi router around their neck, uh, so that uh, big, and, and the owner of the tour said, you know, people want to take pictures and they want to do the social media thing. They want to put it on Twitter. They want to post pictures to Facebook. So 
what better way to do it? And the geeky side of me, I have to tell you, says, what is cooler than a donkey with Wi-Fi? <laughs> yeah, it's just another I asshole on the Internet. <laughs> it's much cooler than that. Yeah. Even my kids would like that. That would beat the cruise any day. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have any jokes? Do you have any jokes here you'd like to share with us? Matthew? None, none that none that won't get me fired. Um, okay, good. I'm sure there's a lot of jokes there about donkeys. And, uh, there's, 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 there's a lot. There's, there's a lot, and I just, you know, I, I look at this and it's like, oh man, where's Peta when you need him? You know. <laughs> oh, so anyway, can we agree that uh, Wi-Fi donkeys is a win? Oh, uh, I don't. Uh, you can. I. I <laughs> I'm gonna pass on that one. <laughs> yeah, right. there, there you go. Okay. Uh, See, so you had one on uh, Uncle Tim on homosexuality. I will admit I did not read this beforehand, so let me have it. Oh, that was the vi- that was the video. Um, you actually you actually shared this on your website this week. Um, Tim Tim Keller kind of walking oh, through. No. I don't. Walk- I- I don't call him Uncle Tim. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, you know, I'm on Long Island. You know, he's in New York. We're pretty close. Yeah, you know. All right. Okay. <laughs> or not. Yeah, Mr. Keller. Um, well, we can share that. We can share that link now that I know what it is. Yeah. But what was your take on that? I thought he did a good job. I did too. You know, I I really appreciate the well thought out approach and you know ever there's there seems there's always going to be a a furor raised when somebody sounds like they might be dancing but i i don't i don't know that he was dancing i think he was choosing his words wisely mm-hmm. and were i up there i would probably have been shot and so yeah yeah well i think i think two things i think um the audience he was in front of uh you always have to take your audience into consideration yeah. and i think he did that and he he gave a Good solid answer, but he gave it in a in a uh, a, a really good way. I thought um, the second thing is I think I think you alluded this in a comment on the blog is that if you would have taken Tim Keller's name off of that and subscribed those words to somebody else, people would have had a totally different. Everybody looks at this as Tim Keller. Mm-hmm. Um, so Tim, you need to give us the definitive answer. On this, so that there's no wishy-washiness at all. I right. think I don't think it was wishy-washy at all, but um, but I think some people are just not. They're gonna want more from because it's right. Know, him freaking telling. <laughs> yeah, if 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 Rob Bell had said that, I mean, he, they would have said that he's all sorts of heretical, and I I, yeah. I just. Yeah. But I, I do, I, I really respect the way that he carries himself and the way that he communicates with people, um, especially in Manhattan. He is he is he is uniquely qualified to be able to speak into the the culture of that part of New York City. So that, yeah. that's a win. Yep, a win. Where's my Where's my? Uh... Oh. Um, <clears throat> okay, Rick Rick Warren cancels his forum with the candidates. What what did you think about that? Yeah, um I, I was uh saddened by it actually. I watched the first one four years ago and I thought it was the most refreshing thing I'd seen on the campaign trail as far as uh I thought Rick did a great job uh, and um uh, I, I I like Rick. Rick mm-hmm. Rick's uh, a great guy, but I so I'm not trying to um you know but I thought he asked the questions that no reporter would ask, right? Uh, whether it was gay marriage or whatever the other issues were. I thought the candidates were more open with him. It was much more conversational than any of the debates or any of the campaign speak that you heard. Um, so, and I really enjoyed the first one. So I was looking forward to uh, the second one. I was disappointed that it's not going to not going to happen. A little bit of um, uh, Rick's getting a little bit of. Uh, consternation in the press um, he uh, he did a conference call and said I, I called it off because everything is just so nasty and vitriolic out on the campaign trail uh, some reports are saying that well no the candidates actually didn't want to go um, so I don't I don't know uh, uh, it could be a combination of both but I, I whatever it is I'm sad it's not gonna happen I was looking forward to it yeah, yeah, me, me too. I'm, I'm bummed, I'm bummed by that. I, you know, I, I tend to give Rick more 
Um, I tend to trust Rick more than I do anybody that's speaking for for the different the press. Oh, yeah, come on. Well, I just just you know just a little <laughs> bit, not much, just yeah, just, just yeah. a touch. Um, and so I, I I I appreciate. I think I think the line that I read was that um, you know why why are they going to come here and pretend to be all nicey nicey and then go back out and you know and start the smears and the and the lies and the again. So I I, I give him credit for having the guts to do that. Yeah. So. I do too. I do too. Uh, you know, here's one. Here's a quick one. I just think is is silly. Okay, <laughs> so we've got this. Uh, uh, I'm trying to find it here. Representative. Uh, what is his? Uh, what is his name? Representative Kevin Yoder of Kansas, who was on this uh, um, congressional trip last year to Israel. And uh, one of the junkets that they take, and he decides just kind of for the moment that he's going to go and see that in the Galilee, I think it was something. Um, what was the guy thinking? <laughs> Dude, I I don't know, but I'd vote for him. You'd vote for him? Oh man, that's a huge mess. That's just, <laughs> that's just I. Uh, I would say there's no there's no off on the genius switch. This guy has no genius switch. Uh, <laughs> that that was I, I read that that was something special right there. That that really was. I mean, what's going through your mind though? I mean, you're you're a. This reminds me. Uh, I'll be honest. This reminds me of a megachurch pastor from California. Some of you might remember this. Probably six or seven years ago, the pictures of him came up with his wife and another woman in a hot tub and they, his wife and the other woman were topless and they took a picture of it that that's the same type of okay you're a public figure and, and again this doesn't it happens in the church world too but number one you're stupid enough to skinny dip uh, or number one you're stupid enough to go topless in a well, I go topless in a hot tub but you know, with your wife and another woman but then the you take a picture of it. It's a mess for me. There's, there's, it, it's, it's amazing to me how out of touch people in positions of power are to realize or to not, to not, or you know, to think that this is a good idea in this day and age where everybody's got a cell phone camera. Come on, man, really? It, you know, in a day that that TMZ, oh yeah, will publish a picture of Joel Osteen with no shirt on. Um, you know. Uh, I feel for I feel for people, but don't uh, don't be intentionally stupid. Exactly. Yeah, I, 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 I'm it, stupid enough when I'm trying not to be stupid. Yeah. I'll probably yeah. do something stupid today, and it'll be all I'll be on the NBC News tonight or something. You know, <laughs> this podcast might do it, man. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. that that, yeah. that this, despite my earlier comment, that is a miss for me. But you know, <laughs> so 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 should we should we do the video? You know, uh, we're going a little long here. I don't, I don't know that I'll show the video, but we'll, we'll show it on the show notes. But um, Pat Robertson again, just uh, you can always rely on Pat Robertson. If I had a, if I had a church late night talk show, Pat Robertson would be my best friend for my monologue because he's always saying something that's just silly. You know, he was asked about, um, uh, he made some kind of comment about a, a lady that had adopted kids from different countries and. He said something about, you know, no man's going to want to take on the United Nations and that some of these kids, when you adopt them from third world countries, are just goofed up and have head problems. And and it just sounded like everybody's racist grandpa, you know? Yeah. Uh, and, 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 uh, and, and he actually, at the end of his little rant, said, well, I'm going to stop now because I already got myself in trouble. I think he knew it. But uh, And then he had to come back the next day and apologize and say, that's you know, we've done all kinds of work with orphans all around the world. And I'm sure he has. But, um, I, they they don't they don't pay his co-host enough money. Not only no. did she keep a straight face through that and not shoot him, she also threw him a big bone going into this, saying, "Oh, because men are dogs." Yeah. You know, hello, yeah. Pat Cluebird. Yeah. This is how you take this one. And but his he, answer he, pretty much uh, <laughs> validified that most men are dogs. Yeah, uh, pretty much. I have Wait a suggestion to... for Pat. Pat, take it. Take the next flight to Jerusalem. Get go off the plane dipping. in Israel and go skinny dipping in the Galilee because it's only going to help your public persona. At this point. <laughs> Absolutely, I think that would be great for him. 
<laughs> oh, okay. So well, we've, who's, we've who's the with... biggest hit or who's the biggest miss? I, I, I'm going to vote for Pat Robertson. I think. Oh, it's, it's like... Pat Robertson all the way. Okay, we agree. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Pat, oh Pat. Okay, this this week, what are you up to? Anything exciting? You got the nines uh, coming up. Uh, you know what? Today's my birthday, so I'm going out with my family for supper tonight. That's going to be nice. cool. Um, my son is playing. Uh, he has a band, and they're playing a, a a gig at a at a big thing this weekend. So I'm going to go watch that. That's always fun. Uh, my oldest goes back to college on Sunday, so we're taking that trip back. Wow. Uh, and then work-wise, I'm just uh, getting ready for the nines. Nines is the end of October this year. We moved it back a little bit, but all those videos are starting to come in. And um, boy, I watched a couple yesterday that came in. We're talking about uh, well, the ones I watched yesterday were how to deal with a rogue staff member, uh, which was uh, just in incredibly insightful. And then another one uh, on... Um, it was actually from uh, Brian Tome from uh, Crossroads in Cincinnati. I don't know if you remember the story. A couple years ago, they had, during the first night of their Christmas pageant, they had uh, a gal that was uh, suspended in a harness, and she fell and, and oh, yeah. landed, in, landed in the aisle and died, like right in the middle of the performance. So um, he submitted a video yesterday on how they dealt with that tragedy as a church, as a wow. leadership, and it's just real, and it's good, good stuff. Uh, a lot of pain there still, but uh, very open and willing to share. So that's what we're working on for the nines, and it's. I think it's going to be the best one ever. It's going to be great. So when when is the ninth? It's October twenty fifth. And how much and is that? Uh, I'm sorry. And how much does that cost? Yeah, it's zero. Zero. What a bargain! It's free. Well, you get what you pay for, but no, seriously, it's going to be really, really good. That's cool. So. And we're doing it from a an undisclosed, as of yet undisclosed location. I have we haven't announced it yet, but it's going to be really cool. So that, I think people will, will like that too. That's cool. So what are you doing? Are you doing I am. Um, I, I, we are we are taking off next week. The first part of next week, we are headed to um, beautiful scenic Reading, Pennsylvania. Oh, cool! And everybody says, that "What's Amish in Reading?" Is that um, Amish country? No, it's it's uh, 30, 45 minutes maybe from there. I don't. I guess. I don't know. It's Pennsylvania. Everything's Amish country, right? Yeah, yeah. But when you're from Ohio or New York, it is. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So everybody says, "What's in What's in Reading, Pennsylvania?" And I say, "You know, what's in Reading, Pennsylvania?" It's a cheap hotel on Priceline. So we're going. We're just we we said, "What's within three hours that we can get a good deal on?" And let's go explore. So we're going to go and we're going to go find out what's in Reading, Pennsylvania. So well, I'll look forward to finding out next week exactly. What that oh, yeah. might be. Absolutely cool. So before we before we head out, one thing that's messing with you this week, or or sticking with you. Uh, you know, I read an article um, about. We'll 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 give a link to it about a pastor that went from twenty five years in ministry. Uh, kind of described his couple three year journey of going from a pastor in a small church in a small town in the Bible Belt to becoming an atheist and how he now kind of goes out and speaks at these atheist things. Um, and it just kind of messed with me that somebody of faith that has given 25 years of his life to the Lord and to ministry can can make that. Uh, I, I guess the thing, the thing that messed with me a little bit is that I, uh, I assume that you probably know too, I know a few people that used to <laughs> be full-time ministry people, um, pastors, church leaders, worship guys um, that got hurt, they got burned, that had some kind of life thing happen to them, and they're just gone. They're 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 off the radar totally, uh, not living for Jesus, um, and that bothers me. Uh, I guess I, oh, it, there's a little bit of it that kind of scares me because I don't understand their journey, and I I want to make sure that that doesn't ever happen to me uh, because I. I can't imagine that it could, but I know them well enough to know that they could have not ever imagined that it could either. So it's just kind of caught me, uh, those kind of things always make me think a lot about, you know, how important is my faith? Um, you know, have I ever even thought about walking away? Hmm. Um, because people do. I know people that do, and there's a lot of people that do. People get burned and hurt and leave. Yeah. It's sad. So that's yeah. kind of messing with me. How about you? Um, with me, I, there was a, there's an eight minute video that's been flying around, um, from ESPN about sports funerals. 
and it, it starts off with um, with with a Undertaker from Baltimore with a with an Orioles casket, and at, you know I started watching this seriously, thinking that this was like the last twenty years of being an Orioles fan. Um, but what ended up happening is this: this it, it's eight minutes of all these different people who have won it in in death to be remembered and identified by their sports team. Whether it's whether it's the Orioles, whether it's the Cowboys, or, or you know, I think Texas A and M has a special mm-hmm. burial ground that faces the football field, so that you can watch it, you know, for eternity. And mm. it sounds like hell to me, actually. But um, <laughs> I mean, it's Texas A and M. Um, but I, I just I watch that, and at first, you know, you kind of watch it with a little smirk on your face, thinking, oh, okay, this is kind of weird. But then the more I watch it, the more I'm thinking, man, this is kind of sad. Yeah. You know, if 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 the greatest thing that these people can identify themselves with at the end of their lives is the Dallas Cowboys or, you know, the the Baltimore Orioles or, or the Ravens or who, whoever else, I mean, that – Man, that, that 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 should be an indictment of the church, yeah. You know, because we have we have the the greatest story that's ever been told, and we, you know, a big part of what we're what we're called to do is be calling people into this story and to live this story and identify with it. You know, and so that that's that's really I, I showed it to to Teresa, my wife, and and she watched it and she just kind of gave me the gave me the look that says, "Where do you find this stuff?" <laughs> But it's it really has it's been kind of haunting haunting me in the back of my head for 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 um for a week now so and we'll have we'll have a link to that so you can be disturbed as well in the show notes so I'm I'm disturbed I'm equally disturbed outstanding <laughs> well that's that's it anything you have anything before we uh, before we say hey it's lunchtime no this is the longest thirty minutes of my life well yeah you know either <laughs> either somebody was off on timing or yeah man. Uh, the only other thing I would ask is, you know, are we going to video this next week? Because I.